Okay. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Fine. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the first question is, excuse me, one moment, please. Uh, okay. The first question is, uh, what would highlight the work in the production of Nadio? What would highlight the work in the production of Nadio? Okay. Um, well, uh, Nat Geo brings with it a set of standards that um, that uh, us as storytellers must meet. Um, the Nat Geo brand stands for accuracy and authenticity, but it also stands for entertainment, strong visuals, and a kind of an experience uh, that is immersive for the viewer, that really involves them in transparency. Um, and this is one of the reasons that the Mars series, uh, I think, fits the, the Nat Geo brand, and I think that the Nat Geo brand inspires and influences us in a very strong, positive way. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, the second question right now? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go around to everyone individually, and we'll come back for if we have time. Then our next question will okay. be from the line of Tom Bowden. Please go ahead. Okay, um, Ron, what what is the charm of Mr. Bowden? Your line. Thank you. No. Mr. Bowden, is your now uh, muted on your end? Hello. Hello, sir. Hello. I will move on. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, hi, I'm Sarky. Please go ahead. Hey, Ron. How you doing? I'm well. Uh, I was going to ask that sort of Star Wars. Uh, would you want to take, after Solo, would you want to take another Star Wars project where you're from the beginning? Like, yeah. Well, I have great experience with that, and uh, I think it would depend entirely on on the story. Um, my my daughter Bryce is thrilled. She's she's uh, been announced to be directing one of the new uh, one of the new episodes of the series headed by John Favreau, um, and um, and and that's that's uh, she's, having, uh, she's having a great experience. So I'm kind of living through it again uh, through her, and uh, it's just a great creative. Uh, inspired uh, group of, of, of movie lovers who make those projects. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah. Question today comes from the line of Alex Green. Please go ahead. Hi there, Ron. Um, I was going to ask you um, specifically, given uh, given kind of the strong allusions in um, Star Wars generally to the Cold War, kind of the arms race, what you thought about uh, U.S. President Donald Trump and his intonations that he was going to restart that? Uh, um, well, I, I, you know, that was a sort of a double-edged sword for me because on the one hand, I'm, I'm all for any, in, in, anything that, that, that uh, any, pro, any, any program that uh, supports uh, space exploration, I'm generally in favor of. Um, and you know, it's but at the, at the same time, you 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 kind of you kind of wish that that um, unifying uh, uh, exploration and international um, discovery uh, for the benefit of uh, humankind would be the, the the big motivator. With all of that said, it's kind of you know it's kind of important to remember that the the first big giant push into space was all about the Cold War, um, and and um, it's always been sort of uh, sadly ironic to me that that's that that conflict is in fact what what led us to the moon, um, and um, so um, you know it 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 it, it um, that it's it's also why I so appreciate and respect. Um, you know, Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, uh, Sir Richard Branson, you know, these entrepreneurs putting their money and their resources where their mouth is and where their dreams are. And, um, and, and really, 
uh, giving space exploration uh, a, a real shot in the arm uh, without it having to be about militariz militarization. Go to our next question, and that'll come from the line of Christian Ta with uh, L.A. Natorshin. Please go ahead. Okay, uh, Mr. Howard, it's a pleasure. Uh, I would like to ask you, which is the main challenge in combining acting with uh, testimonies given by different sources like Elon Musk? Well, it was a big experiment um, that, uh, that, that, that began with the question, should we deal with this as a documentary or should we deal with it as, a, um, you know, in, in scripted form? Of course, there's no documentary footage to, to, to really take you to uh, the Red Planet, but we wanted it to be as authentic as it could possibly be, and we wanted the storylines to, to be um, supported by our, our, resort, our research, and it became clear that for audiences to know just how plausible the dramatic ideas we were putting forward were, um, the best way was to actually, um, you know, sh show these, these, these big thinkers um, talking to us, the audience, sharing their, their knowledge and their excitement. And then we went a step further and began covering the, the many of the research projects um, that, 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 that can let audiences see that right now work is being done to try to understand what that human experience um, might be like. So it was an experiment. We didn't even know, you know, what the balance should necessarily be. Audiences um, really appreciated that person. Um, Nat Geo took a big gamble in, in, uh, in tackling it, um, even though there were a lot of question marks around the project. And I think season two um, is, um, is, is all the better for, uh, for, for, for our experimentation and is even more cohesive, um, more informative, and, and, and more you know, emotional and adventuresome as well. Thank you very much. Yeah. Our next question comes from the line of Giovanni Bogani with the QN Daily newspaper. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Hi, Ron. Uh, I will be very simple, uh, my English not fluent. So uh, what's the difference between your imagination of Mars when you were a child, uh, the uh, science fiction <laughs> movies and all on, and now what changed in your imagination doing this work, <laughs> producing this series? <laughs> Well, in my imagination, there were monsters and Martians, <laughs> um, and uh, uh, um, and um, um, but uh, but the the reality of my sense of the <clears throat> the plausibility of going to Mars has changed just by working on this show. When it began, I thought it was. Interesting. Hopefully, it would it would inspire people's imaginations. It would it would fuel their interest in space exploration. But I didn't take going to Mars all that seriously, even though I was hearing about it as a kind of lament from from um, from a number of the of the Apollo astronauts back when I was doing research on Apollo 13 that we hadn't gone on not only to the moon for more more uh, excursions but also. Uh, expeditions to Mars. But as I began working on the show, interviewing uh, some of these thinkers, reading um, Steve Petranik's book that we that is, a, is, is like a Bible to us, which is how we will live on Mars, um, and and, uh, and and developing uh, the, the series, I, I shifted from thinking that it was a, a sort of a, a long shot question mark to, to something that I believe will happen and I also think should happen. Uh, and, and I think, I think um, you know, that, uh, that humankind will, um, you know, will, will, be, will benefit from that exploration if, if, we, if we'll carry it out. Thank you very much. You bet. Thanks. Our next question today comes from the line of Jose Ocha with the Presidente Libre. Please go ahead. Hi, 
Ron, nice to meet you. Thank you for being in this interview. Uh, I just wanted to know, um, you uh, obviously already had experience working in serious, uh, like a whole other team, and you say that you already want to work in things that have to be in space exploration. What do you think that we as a audience and you as a producer are always intrigued by this idea of space exploration? Why we should care about Well, I think there's a there's, there's a there's a large portion of uh, of the population that um, that in every generation has has looked to its horizons and wanted to explore and know more. It's cur it's curiosity, it's sense of adventure driving it. And uh, and I think that's you know that 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 deep space is that frontier for us now, um, and, and uh, so when I made Apollo 13, I could see that audiences were engaged in multiple ways. It was emotional. It was it was it, it, there was excitement, but there was also a kind of a Uh, an intellectual engagement uh, that wasn't academic, but it was it was uh, um, but it was it was um, um, it was just speaking to their imaginations in a very realistic and 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 um, exciting way. And I think Brian Grazer and I both witnessed that. And the first movie that I'd worked on based on real events. And um, it, it really inspired me to want to 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 do more of that. Um, and so, whether it's been you know Rush or A Beautiful Mind um, or, or From the Earth to the Moon, which was a series about going to the moon, uh, and, or now Mars or, or Genius, for, also for Nat Geo, uh, these these stories inspired by real events, uh, they engage us as storytellers and audiences on multiple levels, and it, it's uh, exciting to deal with those subjects. Thank you. You bet. Next, we have a line of Lasalix Hernandez with La Nisania. Please go ahead. <coughs> Lasalix, your line is open. With the LA Nation. I will move it along and we will go to the line of Ryan McPhee. Please go ahead. Hello, Ron. Um, I just wondered um, in an age of easily offended snowflakes and millennials, do you think a, um, a character like the Fonz would be banned from TV today? <laughs> <laughs> I think. <laughs> Pretty good question. Uh, no, uh, no, not banned. I you laugh. And he he <laughs> yeah. did. Uh, not not banned, but I'm I'm uh, you know I, I'm sure there's some some uh, <coughs> behaviors that everybody thought are absolutely hilarious uh, that were portrayed in the in the 60s, 70s, and 80s uh, that we've now come to realize are um, you know are are are, are um, just not acceptable. Uh, and um, um, so, uh, you know, I'm, I think that would affect all the characters, uh, but but certainly, um, for, you know, somebody as bold uh, um, as uh, as the Fonz, you know, probably probably need to be reined in a little bit. He needs to clean his eyes. <laughs> or, or taught a lesson, you know, somehow I, within within the framework of the show. You know, perhaps Mr. C would have to sit him down and talk to him a little bit. Yeah, great. Thank you. Thanks for indulging me about that. You bet. <laughs> And next, we will go to the line of Romania uh, Raganali with El Morodo. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, Ron. Um, actually, uh, since you first started the show, have there been new developments in the real mass research that uh, impacted the second season? Yes. Yes, there have. Just, you know, more, I mean, there's just more data coming in all the time, more research. And this is one of the big surprises when I got involved in this project is I didn't realize how many people 
how many scientists, how, how, how many individuals were dedicating their, their professional lives to um, the, this, this, this um, research uh, and, 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 and serious exploration uh, into what it will take to, to go to Mars. Um, and and experience deep space travel and so forth and and in that research, you know they just keep learning more and more about Mars because as as it becomes a more immediate um, uh, goal, uh, it's uh, you know it has to do really with the geology and and, and water and and the possibility of of, of uh, you know uh, um, microbes micro life and and and. Uh, um, and, and those sort of discoveries, which really have just, you know, fueled us because because we you know we've been working with the you know many of the you know many of the scientists, many of the futurists who uh, have believed in the in the in the in the plausibility and viability of Mars, um, and, and you know for for years. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Our next question will come from the line of Sergio Lomares with the Carlos Franiel. Please go ahead. Sergio, your line is on. Uh, yeah, I'm here. Uh, okay, Ron. Uh, what What is the charm of looking at Mars, doing or changing this planet? I, I didn't quite understand. Are you saying you're replacing this planet? Yes, I, I um, yeah. What is the chunk of looking at the Mars? Right. What is the chunk of looking at Mars doing or retaining this planet? Okay, I think. Um, look, I think there are a couple of very compelling reasons to explore Mars and to colonize Mars. Um, for, uh, for, first, you know, we, every time human beings take on uh, um, a, a challenge like that, a collective challenge, uh, it, it, raises, it raises the bar on what we know. And that, and that always has a ripple effect in terms of improving lives on Earth. Um, number two, uh, it's, it's, um, um, I, I, it's not so much about Mars being um, a replacement planet. That would be very, very difficult. But it is habitable. It's difficult and challenging, but habitable. Um, but it's an important idea for the, the profound idea, uh, the profound uh, strategy of deep space exploration, like Star Trek. Uh, and there we might find planets that would be much easier for us to inhabit and, and much more compatible. And I, so I think that's the long-term goal. And in the meantime, the sooner that we establish uh, Mars as habitable and colonize it, the sooner we have a, a, a kind of a lifeboat for uh, humanity. Uh, I don't, I, you know, it's not that it's not that the entire that that, uh, that the billions of us could could get to Mars and live, but enough of us could go to keep the species alive while that 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 deeper exploration of space could carry on. <laughs> Next, we'll go to the line of it. Please go ahead. Cool. Uh, hi, Ron again. Um, I was going to say, Elon Musk sort of said something about you how to colonize or what wants to, yeah, hope to colonize in Mars in 2028 or some mission to go there. I wasn't sure if you thought that was really realistic and if you want to go to Mars. Um, you know, I I wouldn't count Elon's projections out. Um, he's uh, um, uh, you know a, a very very you know he is but 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 most people feel that's that's um, uh, overly ambitious. Most people I talk to, uh, most knowledgeable people I, I should say I talk to, believe that that's that that's a little ambitious. But um, you know. But that's not impossible. The technology is already there. That's why so many of these astronauts were so dismayed that we didn't keep the program going once we got to the moon with a, with Apollo 11. And by the mid 70s, we'd shut it down. Uh, the, you know, go, going to the moon. 
Um, and the uh, because we could we could we could have thought seriously about going in. That's been Buzz Aldrin's beef ever since, really. For decades, he's been saying we've got to go to Mars, and he's not the only one of the astronauts who believes it. He's just the most out, he's just the most um, outspoken. Um, so uh, you know, I really I I, I have come to really uh, uh, agree with the goal, um, and um, I, and you know, and I kind of began as a as a, as a good drama and an exciting, inspiring idea to tackle. Um, and it immediately stopped being, uh, should we go to Mars? And instead, um, here's here's what I think it would look like, and here's what our here's what our scientists and researchers tell us it will look like, and what the experience might feel like when we go to Mars. Would you want to go to Mars? Really? Uh, no, uh, I wouldn't. I, I don't think there's any. There's no job for me up there. I I, I love uh, directing movies and television shows. Uh, and uh, and I and I and Imagine Entertainment is is um, you know is 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 very earthbound for the moment, uh, and so I don't think there's much for me to do up there except take up space and oxygen. Um, and, uh, so, um, but but by the time there's Mars tourism, um, you know I I think uh, you know I I, I kind of think I, I won't be that that uh, adventuresome anymore. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fine. Question is from the line of Alex Green. Please go ahead. That looks like Mr. Green disconnected. We'll go to the Christian Fonts line. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Um, mass colonization is nearer than ever. Uh, what aspects of our daily life were harder to put on screen? Um, well, it, it's, uh, you know, everything about this has been challenging, especially for a television show on a television budget, uh, to, 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 to create, um, you know, an authentic <coughs> sense of what it's going to be like to, uh, to live there. From a practical standpoint, I'm just telling you, it's very miserable to wear those, to wear those, those, uh, those, those Mars suits. And um, uh, you know it's it's hard work. It 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 it, 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 it strains muscles. It gives headaches, and everybody it gets dehydrated. It's 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 hell. Uh, so uh, I, I hats off to the actors for doing all the hard work, doing the research, uh, including uh, you know working with um, with uh, astronauts like Dr. May. Jemison went and, and, and met with them and, and uh, did a, a couple of days of instruction to try to help them understand, you know, what it's like to be in those sort of environments. 